Hey, what's up? Alex here, back with another smart home video. Today, I'm going to talk about how do you make all these remote control devices smart in a way. This is one of the most beneficial part of a smart home implementation because every house will definitely have quite a number of remote control devices. For sure, you will have your aircon, which is right behind your TV. Then you might have remote control fans, sound system, a laundry rack system, a projector, and etc. I will first give some basic introduction of the technology followed by some walkthrough configuration guides and lastly my advice and recommendation so make sure you watch to the end some basic and points to take note first about such solution first of all there are two types of remote control infrared which stands for IR and radio frequency RF in short how do you know whether your remote control is IR or RF just simply test it out with the remote control not pointing directly to the device. For infrared, it requires a line of sight pointing to the device IR receiver. For RF, as long as you are like within a certain distance range, you can control it since it's basically using radio frequency as the name suggests. Typically 433 MHz unless it is a super old device. Therefore, the placement of the device is very important because you want to maintain line of sight for IR device and still within range for the RF. In my living room, I have my aircon, my TV, two ceiling fans up there, and I also want to reach my uh, laundry rack system in my service yard over there. So in order to achieve that, I need to have the device at this exact spot. Unless I mount it over at the ceiling, there's no place for me to put it. I can't be putting it in the middle of nowhere. So in the end for me, I have my switchboard hub over here at my study room. Here, which is able to control my TV and air conditioner. Then I also have a Broadlink RM Pro, which I put it here on top of my fridge, which then connects to the two ceiling fans and also my laundry rack over here. Let's look at the IR capabilities in the switchboard hub. I will demo using the cloud shape looking one, but I heard it's not for sale anymore. Left the hub mini, which has no difference in terms of functionality, only appearance difference. To add a new appliance, select your hub, then tap on add appliance. Then you will see their list of presets. Let's try out the TV first. Choose the brand that you are using. For mine is Samsung. So I will choose manual selection. I think this is a list of many Samsung TV model numbers. Mine is not in the list, so I just anyhow select a UA65. Okay, let's test it out. I'll switch on the TV with the TV right behind. Okay. Surprisingly, it works perfectly just like that. You can also add a customized remote in, but take note that their hubs don't support learning RF, only IR. Let me just show you a bit how the learning works. I have a Lumos projector remote control that I want to add in. So same thing, just tap on add appliance. I will select projector and straight away manual selection and customize. Then you will see a list of presets for the projector buttons. Follow the on-screen instruction. Press the remote button to be learned repeatedly until the hub turns green. So if I want to learn the on button, I will just tap on on. Then once I press start, the hub will turn yellow. Then you will want to point the remote control at the hub. Then just press the button. Then it will turn green. It means that it has finished learning that button. Do the testing. Then once done, just save the button. So on and so forth until you have completed all the buttons learning. You can also add some other buttons that is not inside this preset but is inside your actual remote in. So you can do it this way. Like for example, I have a home button. Then you can name it as anything that you want. Then you have an additional home button over here. Then you want to link the SwitchBot app to Google Home, same as how you apply for the rest of the smart home ecosystem. So same here, SwitchBot app added. So these two devices, the TV and AC, are linked from SwitchBot. 
Then of course, once the device is seen in this page, you are then able to use Google Voice Assistant to trigger it and put them inside your routines. Broadlink Iron Pro works pretty similar, but it supports RF as well and a few more features. The controls are very responsive. And both of them, you can create and configure scenes and they will be synced over to Google Home automatically. I like this feature from Broadlink where you can set some delay timer to the next input action. Setting one second in between is good to prevent some latency. So for this kind of remote control lights, I can set a scene to change the light this way. Once the scene got synced to Google Home, you can then combine with your other smart home devices as well as Google Assistant features and set them inside a routine. I have a laundry time routine here that first switch on my Akara service yard power, then switch on the lights of the laundry rack, then have it decline down for 10 seconds, remind me to put in all the dirty laundry and remind me once the washing is completed. Laundry time. Remember to put all the laundry. Alright, I'll remind you at 4.36pm. There are many potential to this and it's up to you how you like to make full use of this smart home capability. In the beginning of the video, I mentioned that using RR Blaster can make your remote control devices smart. But they are not truly smart because you are actually just simulating pressing the remote control. This means that you have no idea what is the current state of the device, whether it is on or off. For example, my goodnight routine wants to switch off everything before I go to bed. So I have my R blaster to press the on or off button. If the state of the TV is already off, it will end up switching on the TV instead. Good night, Alex. This happens when the remote control share the same button for the on or off, which happens for most of the cases. If it is a separate button, then it's still okay, there is still work around. In the ideal smart home world, what we want is that the device is natively smart, built for smart home. But unfortunately, the technology is not there yet. That's how R Blaster, smart plugs, switch boards all come into the picture to somehow make them smart. As such, I don't like some companies advertising their product as a smart home product, then realizing their definition of smart is basically leveraging a separate R Blaster solution and automating their remote controls, that's all. For example, a company selling blinds, motorized blinds controlled by a remote, then they advertise it as a smart blinds. Hiya! So there are so many brands of R Blaster out there wish to get. My recommendation is to look at the ecosystem first. What else can it do? For example, the hub from SwitchBot, not only can it do RR, but also bring integration to all your other SwitchBot products to Google. Because at the end of the day, you don't want so many smart home products lying around. At least for me, I like to keep my setup clean and simple. Next will be things like whether it has the capability to learn a new remote, how far is the range, integration with Google, and if you have RF devices, whether it supports RF. You can have a mixture of brands like me, I have the SwitchBot and Broadlink. It doesn't matter because as long as they are all integrated back to the central platform of your choice, in my case Google, then it's perfectly alright to have a different brand for each part of the house. Anyway, this is really not an expensive tech. And in fact, if you are Huawei or Xiaomi phone users, our phones actually have an R Blaster feature inside. We already have ZigBee Hub in the latest Amazon Echo speakers, so I'm not surprised if the future generation of the Google Nest Hub, uh, Nest Mini, will come with a RR Blaster inside. This means that those standalone devices that does only one thing, one and only function inside, will probably get obsolete in time. Alright, due to the massive good response from my SwitchBot video, I managed to get a couple more giveaways. So two lucky winners this time, each will get a hard mini, a white and a black switch board, and also a remote which I think is more useful than the thermostats in my previous giveaway. So let me know in the comments down below if you are still interested to get hold of this. Winners will be announced at the end of the next video. And the winner of this super cute Divoom D2 speaker is... Konatan. Reach out to me via email or IG and I'll send this speaker to you right away. 
Guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.